Hey y'all, it's Lisa here with a video for Ellen Hudson. Today I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks using white watercolor. This is Daniel Smith's Chinese White and I've squeezed it from the tube into this little pan. So first off, I wanted to let you know that white watercolor is an opaque color. I'll show you what I mean here with this Sharpie. So pretend like this is an image that you've stamped in black and you're coloring over it with white watercolor or um, white watercolor that's been mixed with another color and watch what happens. Since this is opaque, it's going to dry and leave this like hazy kind of cloudy look to your lines. So they won't be crisp anymore. So I highly, highly recommend that you heat emboss your stamped images with clear powder just so that this doesn't happen to you. So next I wanted to share one of the great things about white watercolor and that is that you can mix it with any other color that you have in your collection and you'll instantly get new colors. This is like so cool you all. So I'll have the whole list of the colors that I'm showing you today in the blog post so that you can see what they are. The first one that I'm going to use is Quinacridone Coral. These are all by Daniel Smith. And this is a really beautiful kind of a warm red. It's not really what I would call coral. I usually think of coral as being more of like a peachy pink. Anyhow, this is Quinacridone Coral. And look at how pretty this color is. I use this all the time for flowers and like Christmas reds, like for Santa's suit. Um, but there you have it. It's a very vibrant red color. Now watch what happens when I mix in some Chinese white. Isn't this just a beautiful color? I can see using both of these together on one card to color in flowers and have them coordinate perfectly together. Next up, I wanted to share the same thing with phthalo green. This green is really vibrant and I hardly ever use it on its own. I usually end up mixing it with a yellow to kind of tone it down because as you can see here, like look at how green that is. Like I wouldn't want to use this on um, like leaves, for example, just on its own without toning it down some. But watch how pretty it looks when you add in this um, Chinese white. It kind of turns it into a really soft, minty kind of green. I think this is just so pretty. Since phthalo green is such a strong color, I'm going to add in even more of the Chinese white to kind of tone it down even more. But here you go. Isn't that just so pretty? Last but not least, I wanted to share the same technique with quinacridone rose. This is more of a cool pink that, as opposed to the quinacridone coral that I showed you first. And it's another one that's really, really vibrant on its own. And it's another one that I also love to use for flowers. Look at how pretty this is. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix in some Chinese white with the quinacridone rose. And look at how pretty this is. I think it makes like the perfect blush pink like for cheeks. Next I wanted to share a fun technique that you could do with the Chinese white. So I went ahead and pre-stamped some of these snowflakes from Flora and Fauna on watercolor paper. And in case you didn't know this trick already, you can mount all three snowflakes on a block and stamp them all at once. And that way your background comes together super fast. All right, so now we're going to make a really pretty kind of a snowy background. And I'm going to use that quinacridone coral just because I love this color for Christmas. And I switched to a larger brush to make this go faster and to make it um, easier to paint. And I like to make a big puddle of water here that I can pull from as I'm coloring the background. And that way it will kind of stay the same color and consistency. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up this background painting. 
basically I'm just coloring away and I'm not really worried about trying to make it where you don't see any lines because when we add the Chinese white to this, it's not really going to matter anyhow. And here is the finished background. Now before we can move on to the snowy part of the technique with the Chinese white, we're going to need to let this dry just a little bit. So while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a big puddle of the Chinese white watercolor so that we can use it for splattering. Okay, now the background is just about how we want it. There's some parts that are still fairly wet, but then there's other parts that are starting to dry. So let's go ahead and splatter on that Chinese white. And you can see here how it's like blossoming in the wet paint and making like kind of like a really neat frosted kind of look like it's snowing. So the trick here is you want your paper to still be damp so that the paint will move around and blossom like that. But if it's too wet, it will just like fade and blur. But here you can see what's happening. Isn't that super cool? Now for the finished tag. Here's how that background dried. I just love how this turned out. Look at how the Chinese white like kind of blossomed in there and made this cool like frosty effect in among the snowflakes. And I used the speech bubbles dye and some snowball droplets to kind of make it look like she was like thinking or dreaming. And then I used the phthalo green plus the white on the holly for that soft minty look. And last but not least, the quinacridone rose and the white on her cheeks. Thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you give these techniques a try. May all your Christmases be white.